all right so hello 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 welcome back so um i can see that people are starting to come in so bushro ali good morning to you so uh everyone please get your friends to be in on this session because you do not want to miss out on this session right so uh we talk about all about education uh we we talk through about uh softwares techniques on how to deliver lesson plans right but the main thing or the main event us as educators as teachers as parents it's all about becoming an exceptional teacher right and becoming exceptional there's no way towards it unless if you dedicate yourself to the craft unless if you spend your time honing the skills brushing up the skills to become a better educator or a better teacher so our next speaker for today wow he is what i call the teacher of teachers right he has all the tools all the platforms all the things that you need right if you want to be a good teacher please after this session please go to his platform and check out what this guy has installed for you right all of the tools so he's the teacher of teachers okay so uh i would just go through who he is so he is a professor of food technology at the school of industrial technology university science malaysia currently the director of center for development of academic excellence he has been teaching at usn for 25 years so that's what i call the teacher of teachers right so he's like the, the godfather of education. So he was the recipient of the prestigious National Academic Award, right, for teaching from the Ministry of Higher Education. He has been recognized as the top 50 educators in Asia Pacific 2015 by Therapin Asia. And he has been awarded with the Malaysia's Rising Star Award. Wow, highest research citation in agricultural science, food, food science and technology right so all the award lists are there man uh research star award and the world's most influential scientific minds uh, by clarivet analytics so not only is a teacher he's a genius as well right a scientist a genius an educator is a strong advocate of leveraging the internet as an alternative medium for learning and teaching so he's just shared with me that e-learning it's it's not a new thing for him. He started off since the 1994s, when, when Yahoo just started to, to, to come out uh, in, in the eyes of the public, right? So he is that uh, epic, right? As of September the 2nd, 2019, his teaching video on YouTube have got over 589,000 views from 200 countries, right? It's not easy to, to create education content and to get half a million views on YouTube. So uh, with an estimated minute watch of 1.7 minutes, about 3.24 years of people using their time, investing their time on his courses. And uh, yeah, his accolades goes on and on. And uh, there's nothing more proud for me to introduce this man over here. So without further ado, let me bring up uh, Professor Abdul Karim Alia. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to... <laughs> Prof. Abdul Karim, right. Prof, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay, Jay. I'm doing fine, thank you. <laughs> you know, your accolades, I can go on for half an hour more, but I just want to keep things short, right? <laughs> That's already very long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everyone, uh, please say hi to Prof. Give some likes, give some love. Uh, we want to thank you, uh, Prof, for uh, spending your time investing your time giving value to the teachers out here or 2500 right now uh, in the group and going to grow to more in future so uh prof uh, a context for uh, audiences out there a little bit about yourself why you're here uh, what are you going to be delivering today thank you jay thank you uh bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh good morning and hello hello uh, everyone so how's uh, everyone this Saturday morning? Well, uh, Jay has uh, give a very kind of epic introduction. Uh, I, I think it's the first time uh, this is a very, <laughs> I would describe it as an epic introduction. Thank you, Jay, for very kind words. I don't deserve it. 
uh, and I'm very excited, very delight, delighted to be here. Thank you for having me uh, this morning, Jay. Well, I'm here because uh, you invited me for this uh, for this event, uh, and I couldn't help it uh, because you asked me to talk about uh, being an educator and what does it take to become uh, you know a great um, educator or professional, so-called professional teacher, as I as you put it in the title that you've given me. So thank you for having me, Jay. All right. So awesome. Wow. I see that there are a lot of your um, ex-student that actually tune in. So I, I guess you have fans coming in just to tune <laughs> in, right? I have one of uh, the comment session from one of the, uh, the students here actually told me she came into this education summit just to have a glimpse of Prof Karim, right? So <laughs> guys, you are not, you are, you, are, you are out of your mind if you don't know how epic this person is. Okay, so I, I wouldn't want to drag on more time from Prof. So um, I would just like to pass the floor to Prof. So please uh, do what you do best. All right, so uh, floor is for you, Prof. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Let me set the timer so that I don't exceed the time too much. Um, so once again, thank you, Jay, and thank you, the organizer of uh, EDU Education Summit 2020 for having me in this session and to share uh, some uh, topic uh, which is very close to my heart. Uh, I love to talk about being an educator and what does it take uh, to be one. And we ultimately, we want to be not just an ordinary educator or ordinary teacher, we want to become a scholar. So uh, let me share my PowerPoint. So Jay, can you see my PowerPoint on the screen? Yes, I can see very clearly. Right. Yes, yeah. on the first right. screen. And the audio is still very clear? Yes, uh, just now it was a bit unstable, but right now it's good. Oh, okay, I don't know why, uh, but um, all right. Um, this is the title uh, given to me by uh, the organizer. What does it take to become a professional teacher? And um, I use the term teacher uh, as a broad term to describe anyone who involved uh, in education and especially in the context of formal education. So we are talking about teachers in school, teachers in, you know, uh, in colleges, lecturers, uh, academics in higher education as well. Anyone that involved in uh, education, especially in the context of formal education. And what does it mean by become a professional? So this is something that I would like to share, uh, but I just like to make it clear here. This is from my perspective. Uh, you don't have to agree to everything that I say. Uh, we can agree to agree and we can agree to disagree. That's a spirit. All right. Um, I think I, I would consider that all of us here, especially in the session today, I assume that all of you are educators and we are, I consider it as a lucky bunch to have our career in education, in teaching. So as George Lucas uh, says here, education is the single most important job of the human race. Because all other jobs, all other professions out there, they started off as a student and they have a teacher. So we are number one in terms of the kind of career that really at the apex of everything else. Whether people still see educa educators or teachers or teaching as a novel profession, that's a different matter. But I think the honors is on us, the educators, to put the prestige of education to the highest level. How do we demonstrate that? How do we portray the image of so-called professional educators? How do we play our role uh, in the most effective way to nurture the young talent, to become the future nation builders, uh, so to speak? So it is up to us to give the, pres the prestige, so-called put the teaching and teachers at the highest on the apex of everything else in terms of the kind of professions that we have uh, out there. And this from a teacher, a high school teacher here, Rosie uh, Singlewitch. Um, if you have Twitter, 
you just put the hashtag live love teach uh, you will find a lot of posters shared by teachers uh, there was one uh, program uh, a couple of years ago where uh, you know educators share their posters and they are so called what they think about being a teacher or why they are in the teaching profession so these are one of the many posters that uh, i have um, in my collection here and i i put up this one because it really describe why we are here because it's always good to start with why and she's been teaching for 15 years maybe and now maybe more she says that i teach for the chance to share the chance to give the chance to teach the chance to learn the chance to make a difference i love that part to make a difference because over the years if we have been teaching hundreds or thousands of students if you can change the make, making a difference or change the life of a single person um, that to me is good enough what's more if you can do that to hundreds or thousands or even millions of people because of your teaching so there is something great so that's from rosie and from me and this is something that i always share with our young uh, lecturers here uh, this is what i put also in my teaching portfolio in 2008 when i submitted this for the uh, national academic award or anugrah academy negara this is my life my joy teaching i simply love teaching so any every time that i say this say i simply love teaching i get a goosebump you know meremang bulu rumah because i really feel it it really you know deep in my heart i know that i love teaching i derive immense joy and satisfaction helping students to learn watching them to grow in confidence and maturity good education is more than imparting knowledge it is also about inculcating skills and instilling values and this is basically what form the foundation of our national education philosophy our falsafa pendidikan negara is not just impart knowledge but it is about inculcating skills and also not to forget instilling values if you are able to put these three things together seamlessly blend them in and infuse them in in our curriculum and deliver that to the best of our ability then you are the great teacher uh, or you can describe yourself as a professional teacher um uh, I'll, I'll, i'm going to elaborate more on that shortly so i i like to see when we talk when we talk about education i like to see the big picture and the whole uh, ecosystem the whole chain of education as a landscape i call it a landscape so um let's look at ourselves when we started off teaching when we joined the school or we joined the university or the college uh, when we just get our qualification as to become a teacher or we get our phd or our degree so we started off as a novice okay so basically the whole thing is is a journey it's about growth a growth the growth in 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 the skill the growth in the expertise the growth in our knowledge the growth in our skills the growth in the experience the growth in the wisdom so the whole thing can be seen as a growth so it's a journey a journey of growth so we start off as a novice you know although uh, we, if uh, if i'm talking about higher education at uh, the university we come back you know with a phd or a teacher that he has a diploma or a degree in education but then the, the four years uh, or more of the education to become a teacher or become an educator uh, is not enough so we start off as a novice a novice educator a novice teacher so we will go through the process go through the motion and we will pick up new things new skill new knowledge new experience and we want to be to aim you know a few years down the road we can become a so called professional i will say more about this so called professional here but ultimately ultimately uh, we want to reach a level where people would recognize us as a scholar so from novice to professional to a scholar but i guess for 
most if we can aspire and strive to become a professional then that will be to me good enough okay so that's basically what i want to say for the rest of my presentation here the whole journey from the novice to the professional to the scholar but of course i want to say more about the professional part so um i want to use the analogy of a foot footballer or a sport man here a footballer uh, i guess uh, many of you recognize this guy lionel messi here so um he's a professional footballer high very highly paid because of his talent okay so that make him stand out from the so called ordinary footballer the amateur yeah the amateur so and this is what he said in one of the interviews and this is really really very uh, powerful words here he said uh, money is not a motivating factor money doesn't thrill me or make me play better i'm just happy with a ball at my feet wow and he said of course there are benefits to being wealthy there are benefits to have these uh, millions of uh, dollars uh, in the bank okay but he said his motivation comes from playing the game i love playing the game i love if i wasn't paid to be a professional footballer i would willingly play for nothing well think about this and this come from a professional uh, footballer if we now reflect on ourselves as an educator as a teacher as a lecturer and we just replace a few words here so let's see in the context of us as the teacher as a teacher here okay maybe we can say something like this if we are really truly um a professional kind of uh, i would say a professional educator that we we are a teacher we are an educator at heart money is good but money is not motivating factor not the sole factor money doesn't thrill me or make me teach better i'm just happy with a chalk in my hand <laughs> well uh, go back to the time when we used a chalk of course with a pen in my hand with a marker pen in my hand with a, with a computer in my hand with a mouse in my hand whatever i can just put it uh, substitute the words there and of course there are benefits to being wealthy if uh, if a teaching profession uh, is recognized and being paid as high as the so called uh, those uh, so called professional uh, engineers or accountants and so on uh, money is good money can uh, make life good as well but i'm in a teaching profession because my motivation comes from teaching the subject i love teaching the students i adore if i wasn't paid to be a teacher i would willingly teach for nothing so ladies and gentlemen my colleagues my dear friends in education if we are really teacher at heart can we really say this meaning that in everything we do we don't really questions with what's in it for us how much money is it is there for us but it's more about doing the best for our students sharing the knowledge nurturing the young talent so that they will become the future generation responsible uh future generation that has not only competency but also values that will become a good citizen of malaysia all right um let me uh, just put a definition here about uh, the word professional a professional is a person who possesses a personal body of knowledge so they are expert you know they have the expertise they have the knowledge they have the core uh, competency and of know how which is recognized and valued by the market a person who is recognized as a professional possesses a social standing which is larger than the specific job he or she holds down Uh, this from Guy Lee Botev. Of course, there are many other definition of professional. I just take it this one just to 
give the uh, I don't know the, the general idea about about what does professional means. So the person has the expertise, has the know-how, uh, is recognized, is outstanding, is being you know recognized by the society, by the community because he's an expert uh, in that particular job that he or she is doing. So if we come back to this uh, Lionel Messi just now as a football, as a professional footballer here. He's uh, outstanding. That's why he is highly paid because he's so outstanding as a football player. If you see how he's playing and compared to, to even the, the fellow professional footballer in the team, in his own team or in the football team, you can see how he's genius how he dribbles and, and so on. So that come that the, the skill that he has, he's very skillful on the field. And that really give value, high value uh, to him as someone that is recognized by the football club that are willing to pay him millions because of a skill that is unique, that is outstanding, that is very different. He's very, very passionate in his game. If you read about his, you know, in, uh, I mean, story about him, how he practiced one skill like dribble, you know, his body, dribbling his body and, and doing all sort of tricks. He spent hours and hours and hours compared to his clicks. So he's really passionate in his own game that he loves. He has a lot of, lots of tricks up of his sleeve, tricks of the trade. So called, you know, so that's why he is a professional. That's why he's being paid a lot of money because when you see him on the field, you're so excited to see him. You can't wait to see him because you know that he will produce that tricks uh, in every game and you really enjoy it. And he set a very high standard. He set a very high standard for himself. So in the context of professional sportsmen like him, professional footballer, these are only some of the attributes or the qualities that already we can see when someone is considered as a professional. He really profess, he really uh, into his own thing, his own, his own job, uh, whatever job that he's doing, he or she is doing to make him or her outstanding, stand out from the crowd and to improve the skill, to master the skill, and being passionate about it, and develop uh, you know, a repertoire of tricks that he can pull any time that he like, depending on the situation on the field, depending on the, you know, uh, who, who, who they are playing, playing against, depending on how the strategy, uh, the strategy change uh, during, the, during the game. So he, he's very flexible, he's very adaptable. All these are actually together, we put together that constitute the professionalism, okay? And set very high standard. So that leads me to the word professionalism. So I take the word from David Master here. He said, basically believing passionately in what you do, never compromising your standards and values, no matter what, and caring about your clients, your people in your own career and from Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the conduct, aims, or qualities that characterize or mark a profession or professional person. So there you are, professional and professionalism. So in the context of teacher and teaching, education, uh, I just put it in a very simple diagram here. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to mention, all the slides that you see on the screen here, I will give you the link towards the end to download all the slide and you can have it and you can use it as you wish. Okay, so if you want to have the slide, wait till the end. <laughs> okay, what constitute professionalism in teaching? So uh, I just show very briefly here, but basically it's about the competence. So uh, the Ministry of Education, for example, for, for teachers, they have already the competency framework. So the eight domains of competencies that a teacher should really master so that they can become a so-called professional teacher. So knowledge mastery of the subject matter, which is very obvious. Practice scholarly teaching, 
adjustment to the environment. This I mentioned just now about adaptability, flexibility. You know, suddenly we have to close shop, close school because of the MCO. What do we do now? So if we are flexible, we don't get panicked. We can know, we know what to do, right? Because we are so flexible, so adaptable. Pedagogy, andragogy, just name it. All those things. Uh, even uh, we don't have a formal education in education. We should learn the basic adult learning theory, the basic learning theory. All these things need, you know, uh, at least a rudimentary knowledge of this. And every competence teacher to become competence and better and better must be a lifelong and life wide learner. I will say more about this. The second one is about performance. Yeah, they are prepared to teach anytime in any situation yeah, because of the flexibility. They can contextualize the subject matter, relate the subject matter to the real life. If you teach science, how do you translate that into the real life to make science very interesting? If you teach mathematics, don't just take it, don't just teach how to derive the equation, but how do you really really use that in the context of the real life, in the application? So in order to be really good in contextualizing your subject matter, you have to be really, really competent in that particular subject that you are teaching. Develop effective methods. So this is a big thing actually, to develop effective methods so that learning happen and learning happen effectively. And students retain you know, the knowledge for a long time. The third one is about conduct. You talk about values in in uh, in uh, education system uh, recently i talk about value based education values based education so we are worried now about value especially in the world of technology now how do we uh, inculcate how do we instill values in our students so these are all about uh, the conduct part so these three domain here or three elements here or three dimension of professionalism in teaching competence performance conduct Okay, and the rest of the presentation is actually uh, kind of uh, um, deciphering some of these elements that would really take you from the novice to the professional and ultimately to the um, a scholar. Okay, so if you are, if you really uh, develop, uh, you know, if we really develop ourselves. Uh, to become a professional, uh, then uh, there will come a time where we can stand out from the crowd. You are just not one ordinary face, ordinary teacher among the, 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 the among the teachers. You are special. You because you are outstanding. You are different. You are unique. You are very highly valued. So stand out from the crowd. And uh, let me talk about some of the so-called attributes of a professional teacher. I borrow a picture of my dear friend here, Dr. Zainal. Uh, he was a professor uh, uh, and he just retired uh, a few years ago. Uh, and you can see uh, the picture there. It is really, I would say, a, really a professional teacher, a scholar, in fact, because he's, he was also the recipient of uh, National Academic Award at the same year with me. Uh, he's from the Applied uh, arts and I'm from the applied science. We together won the uh, received the award uh, on uh, from USM in 2008. Okay, what are the attributes of a professional teacher? Again, this is from my perspective. To me, the common uh, so-called no, the common attribute, the common denominator of when you see uh, all these uh, so-called professional educators. When you see one, you know one. You know they are the one. You know, just by seeing and looking at them, the way they talk, the way they, you know, uh, everything about their body language, the way they, are, the, you know, the you can see the enthusiasm from their voice, from their eyes, everything is oozing out from his expression. They are highly driven by passion. I know this sounds cliche, but what else can I say? Uh, passion is one of the main ingredients to be a professional. Otherwise, without passion. You know, you will just stay there and you won't grow that much. Simon Sinek says, working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. And working hard for something we love is called passion. 
So if everything you do is driven by passion, even though you are doing work, you don't feel like you are doing work because you really enjoy every moment of it. Sometimes, you know, when you are doing it, you are in, the, you're in your element. You become engrossed. You become so immersed in it because you are so passionate about it. You want to deliver the best possible quality that you don't compromise your standard. You will put the time, the effort, everything in it. And everything here can is driven by passion. If you are being forced, you won't be able to do this to do, uh, because it doesn't come from your heart. And when, when, when I talk about passion, uh, this is my icon. Um, he's already retired for a long time. This is Walter Lewin, Professor Walter Lewin from MIT. And uh, he uh, wrote a book because he loved, really loved the subject that he's teaching for the love of physics. So this is really uh, the testimony of how he loved the subject and how he spent so much effort in teaching the subject so that his students also love physics. And he wrote a book on this. So I think one of the attributes of the so-called prof professional teacher, they focus on experiences. They focus on creating experiences. They orchestrate experience. You know, if you see the orchestra playing the, you know, the, the music, the, the symphony, uh, you see the different uh, music, uh, mus musician playing a different instrument, but the, the so-called, the, the, what the, the, the uh, what's the, what do you call this? The, the, the person in front, uh, the, the orchestrator, basically. Uh, there's a name for it, I forgot. He's the one who makes sure that everything is uh, playing harmoniously. So it's all about orchestrating the best learning experience for your students. So students demand experience, not just education. So give them the awesome learning experience. And who can give them the awesome learning experience? These are so-called professional teachers. Because professional teachers, they are competent. They know what to do. They have all the tricks of the trade. They will put the great effort. They will put, you know, invest their time because they only want the best for their students. So Maya Angelou says, I've learned, I've learned that people will forget what you said. Yeah, students will forget what you say in the class for four years, uh, for 12 years. <laughs> because they, most of them will study for the grade. But people will forget what you did even. But people will never forget how you made them feel. So be careful because students will not forget how we made them feel. So we want, we to, we want to give them the best feeling possible. You know, because we want them to remember the education that they have, not only remember us, but remember the school, remember the university for the experience and how those experiences made them feel. So Ellen Cohen said, don't just give your students a lesson. Give them an experience. So if you focus just to cover the syllabus for 14 weeks and, you know, and or for the for the term, and then at the end of that, uh, you will jump uh, very happy because you have covered the syllabus. But then we have to question ourselves what they have learned and what kind of experience they have gone through. So this is something that I think very, very important as a take home message. I guess for any professional teachers, outstanding, uh, great teachers, they always, every moment, they think about how they will make their classroom more interesting, more engaging, more fun, more everything. And yet at the end of the day, the bottom line is effective. Learning happens. So that's, I think, everyone uh, that, you know, uh, can, you can describe yourself as a professional teacher, the students, the course, your class should be always be in your mind. As Larry Spence says, we won't meet the needs for more and better education until teachers become designers of learning experiences. So meaning that we have to take the role of as a learning designer, as an instructional designer, a learning designer, because we want to design that experience 
as part and parcel of our uh, classroom delivery, of our curriculum delivery. Remember the experience and how we make the students feel that would make a difference uh, between the ordinary and the professional teacher. So another thing uh, a professional teacher does, he or she always strive to create the magic moments as part of the learning design. Create that magic moments. So again, I want to share one video here. Professor Walter Lewin just now uh, in the slide is now from from uh, MIT. Yeah? And let's look at this video and what he does in the classroom. You count. Wow, my expectations are high. I want to hear you loud. You ready for this? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> and here is the femur of an elephant. Zero. So I need a volunteer. One, two, relax. What does it remind you of? with Walter Lewin, 45.6, plus or minus 0.1 seconds. Physics works, I'm telling you. That's Walter Lewin, physics works. You see how enthusiastic he is, you know, physics works, I'm telling you. And this is what I describe as a professional teacher. He spent for every demonstration at least 12 hours to prepare everything. And he rehearsed sometimes up to six times for each demonstration for each class. Can you imagine that? How much time that he really dedicated himself in giving the best learning experience for the student? Yes, this is very much teacher centered, but still, uh, I guess the students will enjoy every moment of it because he, Walter Lewin, this professor, really illustrates the concept very clearly. Although physics is a difficult subject but he make it very, very interesting, very, very engaging uh, for the students. So, ladies and gentlemen, my dear clicks, we must create those magic moments because we want to create a memorable and unforgettable learning experiences. And when talk about uh, unforgettable learning experiences, let's watch this one. Three, two, one, hit it in. And the crowd! <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but I, that's funny. I'd like to buy the can of paint. I always shake it first at, oops. It's a magnet. Is it lucky for you? I know how to put it back. <laughs> find me a group of people that laugh together and work together. I'll find you some amazing teachers. Find me in business when people love to come to work and they laugh and there's this energy in there. That's an amazing group of people. How many breaths? Let me slide it down because you are doing a great job. Look at this. We slide it down and it comes out this big old hole over here. In 15 years of asking the questions, I'm trying to find the difference between good and great. A great teacher doesn't teach us facts. They teach us this uh, real world application. And a great teacher teaches us not how to do something, but why to do it. And the long and short of it is, is a great teacher teaches us these unforgettable and kind of gives us a gift, these unforgettable learning experiences. You just kind of drop it in and, hello. Life is good, right? That great teacher is somebody that I may not even remember what I learned in her class, but I do remember loving the fact that I was sitting there in that class every single day. That's an unforgettable moment. Go! This 
is how they teach this even today. As you increase the pressure, you decrease the volume, thus, thus, breaching the integrity of the potato. What does that mean, all right? If you want kids excited, just write the right way, all right? Jam hard on the bottom, <laughs> squish the air, fire this at 60 miles an hour, all right? So this little piece... So if you're teaching science, if you're science teachers out there uh, in the audience, uh, if you don't know Steve Spangler, you miss a lot of things. So go and subscribe his channel on YouTube and see he has more than, uh, I think, close to 100 science experiments. Uh, that he used to illustrate the concept of any concept of science uh, that, uh, you know, in the, mainly in the primary and secondary or high school. Uh, so, but you see, to be a teacher like that, that really spend time to really do all this demonstration and, and so on. Well, I know there are, uh, we, we do have, we do have many science teachers that really put their effort there, but we want everyone uh, every teachers in, in Malaysia to have that kind of uh, aspiration and putting the effort to really become or well, being, uh, you know, uh, described as a professional teacher. So the, 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 the next one that I want to talk about is uh, a professional teacher is the one that is able to bring the best out of his students. So it's about unleashing student potential. So let's watch this uh, short clip from the Dead Poets uh, Society here. Come on, you can't yawp sitting down. Let's go. Come on, up. Gotta get in yawping stance. Uh, a yawp. No, not just a yawp. A barbaric yawp. Yawp. Come on, louder. Yawp. Oh, that's a mouse. Come on, louder. Yawp. Oh, good God, boy, yell like a man. There it is. You see? You have a barbarian in you after all. Now, you don't get away that easy. Picture of Uncle Walt up there. What does he remind you of? Don't think. Answer. A, a, a madman. What kind of madman? Well, think about it. Just answer again. A crazy man. No, oh, you can do better than that. Free up your mind. Use your imagination. Say the first thing that pops into your head, even if it's total gibberish. Oh, uh, uh, a sweaty tooth madman. Good God, boy. There's a poet in you after all. There, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close them. Now, describe what you see. Uh, I, I close my eyes. Yes. Uh, and this image floats beside me. A sweaty tooth madman. A sweaty tooth madman. With a stare that pounds my brain. Oh, that's excellent. Now give him action. Make him do something. His hands reach out and choke me. That's wonderful. wonderful. And all the time he's mumbling. What's he mumbling? Uh, mumbling truth. Yeah, yeah. Truth like, like a blanket that always leaves your feet cold. Forget them, forget them. Stay with the blanket. Tell me about that blanket. You, 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 you push it, stretch it. It'll never be enough. You kick at it, beat it. It'll never cover any of us. From the moment we enter crying to, to the moment we leave dying, it'll just cover your face as you wail and cry and scream. Yeah. Don't you forget this. Every time I watch this scene, uh, again, I always get this goosebump because uh, this is a kind of so-called professional teacher that really are very passionate. They are really doing his or her very best to unleash the potential of the students, to let the students to uncover for him or herself his own or her potential that uh, you know uh, he or she is not really realized that they you know uh, having it. So um, that's about unleashing. Okay, what about being a, a professional teacher? Someone that a people, when you know, when we look at the, the, the teacher, we describe he's an unconventional, crazy, in other, other words. But this craziness or unconventional really brings something different into the classroom that the students really love it. Uh, so let's. Is this Mr. Schneebly? I'm the principal here at Horace Green Prep, and we need somebody to start immediately. Mm -hmm. So, how much are we talking here? $6.50 a week. Hello, this is Ned Schneebly. Everyone, I'd like to introduce Miss Dunham's substitute. This is Mr. Schneebly. All right, look, I've got a hangover. Who knows what that means? Doesn't that mean you're drunk? No. It means I was drunk yesterday. Now, at the most prestigious prep school in the country. Yes, Tinkerbell. That poster charts everyone's performance. Where the students are rewarded for following the rules. What kind of a sick school is this? 
He's going to teach them a lesson. There will be no gold stars or demerits. That will rock their world. It's called Rock Band. Is this a school project? It will go on your permanent record. Hello, Harvard, yo. You, what's your name? Zach. You ever play electric guitar? My dad won't let me. Zach, do not walk away from me when I'm talking to you. What makes you mad more than anything in the world? No allowance. Chores. Bullies. All you bullies get out of my way, because I am really ticked off. Mr. Schneebly. OK, I have to cut short uh, the video. Uh, but that is unconventional teacher, you know? Looks like crazy, but actually he bring a new dimension into the classroom, making learning very fun. Uh, is unconventional. Is uh, beyond the textbooks kind of thing. Uh, well, this is where the creativity really um, needed, or you know, uh, for for teachers, uh, professional teachers that can really inject uh, a kind of um, wonderful, unforgettable memorable learning, learning experience. So from the three examples that I have uh, shown just now, the three video clips that I've shown just now, I, I would uh, summarize some of the attributes of the so-called professional teachers here. They are always energetic. They are always very enthusiastic. They are inspiring. They are exciting. They are thought-provoking. They are very persistent, as we saw in the clip uh, in the Dead Boy Point Society just now, very persistent. You know, although the students are not very responsive and, and so on. So, but to do all this, we need a lot of energy. So we must be very energetic, energetic. We must be seen energetic to the students. The moment we step into the classroom, we bring that positive energy, positive vibes, positive aura to the students. And that will kind of become very infectious. And the students also will become energized, uh, you know, to be active uh, throughout the, the, the class or the session. And I think uh, being a professional teacher also, uh, we, can be, we can become a role model or some sort, or become an influencer. So, uh, you know, an influencer, when you have an influence, just like John Maxwell say in the context of leadership, leaders, leadership is about influence. So being a professional teacher or a scholar also is about, you know, being a good influencer, positive influencer, uh, ability to transform minds, behaviors and outcomes. Students respect your opinions. So we are, when, we, when we become an influencer, the students look up at us as a role model. They trust your judgment and listen for your voice above all others. We know very well how, how our kids listen to the teachers more than the parents, right? So we can, we can use that opportunity to become an influencer. And um, when we become an influencer, learning can happen on the kind of automatic, almost like uh, on, on, uh, very easy, uh, we can, almost like a, you know, auto cruise kind of thing. Because it's very important according to Sugana Mitra, it's not about making learning happen. If you're making learning happen, it's kind of trying to force learning to happen. And that would not be the most way or the most effective way of doing it. But if you can let learning happen, it's about letting it happen. So. It's all, about, it's all about how you design the whole thing and how you, as an influencer, can really uh, get the students to do it out of their own, you know, interest and motivation to, to, to learn uh, in your class. And I also say that uh, professional teachers, they are unpredictable. Why they are unpredictable? They can be crazy. They can come to the classroom doing something that is unpredictable at all because they have a long, they have uh, you know, the, the tricks, a lot of tricks up their sleeve, remember? A lot of tricks up their sleeve. They have a lot of uh, tricks of the trade. They have a lot of tools, a lot of strategies, a lot of uh, things that they can do in the classroom. So uh, so that's why when you, when you have a lot of tricks up your sleeve, then you won't teach the same, you won't be doing the same thing again and again in your class every 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 class, every semester, every year. So uh, Don Wetrick says, you should constantly change and adapt with your students. You can teach 20 years, but please don't teach one year 20 times. So I guess I have about five more minutes. Um, uh, uh, Jay, please remind me. I, I said about 50 minutes for my presentation. Um, okay. Um, I have a few more. Um, 
So I, I'm talking about the, the attributes of uh, a professional teachers here. Um, so can you read the screen here? Make learning fun, making learning fun. Again, this cliche, uh, a lot of people say, make learning fun, make learning fun, but how do we do that? Of course, we need to learn how to do this. So as uh, Einstein says, it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. Awaken joy, awaken joy, so that the students, you know, we, so, uh, we, we can uh, achieve the joy of learning, not the pain of learning, not the suffering of learning, but the joy of learning. And uh, well, this is where our creativity as a learning designer uh, is very important. Uh, <laughs> this one is my own students. Uh, instead of producing the, the snack food like the twisties one, uh, but uh, they produce something like this uh, just by accident. But it makes the whole thing uh, really fun and something hopefully that they will still remember uh, when they look at this picture. I don't know where are they now. Uh, maybe they are now a successful food technologist. Engaging mind. So I want to say more about this, but it's about uh, how we design the learning experience and engage students, you know, make them really immersed and engrossed in the learning process. Uh, make them make them forget about time. Make them want to stay in the room, although the, the period has, you know, the class has finished. Okay. Um, and making learning fun, there are many ways of doing it. So I'll just let me share just 10 seconds of this clip. One uh, example of my, my own classroom here. Okay, I'll skip that part. Uh, another one that I was, another thing that I want to say is about, uh, you know, um, if we've been teaching for a long time, let's say more than five years, 10 years or more, uh, this is a time where we really need to give the memorable learning experience that is beyond the textbooks. Teach beyond the textbooks. So, because uh, we don't want to teach content because content is out there. Um, like Seth Godin says, if there's an information that can be recorded, widespread digital access now means that just about anyone can look it up, okay? So Google is there, Mr. Google is there. Uh, so what we need to do is to deliver the essence, the intipati, the gist of the content and the rest we can design as a problem-based, scenario-based, uh, service learning, all sort of thing that really get the students to be part of the learning and they really have to put their thinking head and really do uh, involved in the doing of the of the thing and that's where they were learning most effectively so education is not the content anymore it's about what you or the student take with them uh, when you when they forget the content after the exam they will forget the content so what's remain what they actually retain is those other things including the experience that we have designed for them so ladies and gentlemen i would like to say here don't focus on covering the syllabus but empower students to uncover it. Last but not least, last part of my presentation, to leave you with my uh, message here. Uh, in order to be really a professional teacher or a, life, or, or a scholar, we really need to continue to be a lifelong, and not only lifelong, but life-wide learner. We have to learn, 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 continue to learn, acquire new knowledge, acquire new skill, develop the, the, the experience, and then only we gain the wisdom. So I'd like to ask you, are you advocating lifelong learning? I have written a long article in my blog. You can Google this one and you can read a long article that I have written about lifelong learning from cradle to grave, okay? Because learning lasts for life. Once you stop learning, you start dying, uh, according to Albert Einstein. So if you are an educator, don't stop learning, okay? So this is another article that I've, I've written. Uh, please feel free to read on in my blog uh, some advice to become a truly professional educator. So a lot of the points that I have uh, covered so far will be there uh, with some deliberation there. And uh, again, uh, uh, Lothal Wynn says, knowledge does not narrow, knowledge only adds, and without knowledge, many experiences in life remain very narrow and very shallow. And Abraham Lincoln says, I don't think much of a man who is not wiser today than he was yesterday. 
So lifelong learning is about, you know, uh, purposeful learning activity undertaken throughout life with the aim of improving knowledge, skill, and competencies within a personal, civic, social, or employment-related perspective. That's a definition by European Commission. So it's a continuous process, learning to know, learning to do, learning to live together. And life-wide learning means we continue to acquire a wide range of skill. You know, let's, uh, okay, that's the, <laughs> okay, that's my timer to say that should stop now. Uh, I have uh, three or four more slides. So basically, apart from continue to learn, but the kind of subject that we learn, we should expand the, the different, uh, you know, different areas that uh, not only focusing on our specialization, but learn all other things acquire and integrate various sets of knowledge and skills in order to apprehend, advance, or, or even in invent new knowledge and skills. Um, so, um, Michelle Santos says, a great teacher is a lifelong learner, truly listen to their student and is curious. Curiosity drives innovation and awakens talent. So ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues, uh, educators, um, you want to aim to be a professional teacher, but ultimately to be a scholar, and you want to cultivate that love for learning so that we can also pass that on to our students. Because the spirit is, I am still learning. I am still learning. I am still learning. So create that mindset in you. Focus on growth. Become a serial master, meaning that you are master of so many things. Build, uh, stretch your limit, stretch your capacity. Build your personal brand and network. Own your development journey. Be responsible. Do what you love and discover your ikigai or reason for being. And stay vital. Last but not least, adopt a growth mindset. Strive to learn something new each and every moment. And don't forget professional development. You need to do a prof personal and professional development so that we can continue to, you know, to, to, to improve yourself, to become more and more competent every day. And don't forget to share because the more you learn, the better you become, the more knowledgeable you become, and time to share. Because the more you share, the more you gain. Share whatever little knowledge that you have. Don't wait until you think you become a master because you never know when is the point that you can really describe yourself as a master. So whatever, whatever little knowledge that you have, share it. So this is a spirit that I want to really encourage everyone to do. Okay, and touch the heart of our students. The heart of education is education of the heart. To teach is to touch life forever. And what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Uh, I just keep this uh, video. And finally, if you are successful in become a professional teacher, you are able to do your, you know, your duty to educate, to nurture. And the testimony of the, our success will be when the students, our students will say this. They will say that, Grades are not a motivating factor. Grades don't thrill me or make me studying harder because there are benefits to having a first class, yes, or fourth flat, but I'm just happy with the knowledge and skills I gain. My motivation comes from studying the subject I love. If a paper qualification is not required for job or for the study, I would, be, I would willingly be studying for the love of learning. Nothing else matters. And finally, from Maya Angelo, you have sacrificed a lot to be here. I'm here to tell you how grateful I am and remind you, remind you that you are rainbows in clouds. Simon Sinek says, words may inspire, but only action creates change. Most of us live our lives by accident. We live life as it happens. Fulfillment, fulfillment come, comes when we live our lives on purpose. Finally, finally and finally, whatever is worth doing at all is worth doing. And from... Steve Jobs, my, always my, uh, my last two slides here. Stay hungry, stay foolish, and for me, stay strong. And thank you for listening, everyone. And this is the slide that I promised, the, the link that I promised for you. Maybe you want to take a picture of this now. 
uh, before uh, I stop the screen sharing, uh, you can download from this link. And there are about uh, 70 or so slides there. Uh, feel free to use it as you wish. Feel free to modify. Feel free to copy whatever that you want and mix with your slide, whatever that you want to do. I'm giving away this slide to you uh, for your use. So Jay, with that, um, I would like to stop here and I would like to thank once again to the organizer and to all the audience that spend your precious time on Saturday uh, with us here. Back to you, Jay. All right, so there we go, Prof Karim, wow. That was such a, you know, that presentation uh, for me, I personally, I feel that teachers out there should watch this again and again every single morning before they step into class. Because <laughs> that encompasses all the different aspects of a discipline of a teacher. And I was halfway through the video, I was thinking, will he be bringing up the School of Rock? And there you go, School of Rock yeah. video. Right. Okay. So everyone, uh, if you have enjoyed uh, Prof. Karim's uh, sharing and presentation, please uh, comment down there. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Right. So uh, I guess time is cutting short. So we'll be opening for one or two questions over here. And by the way, all of Prof. Uh, all of Professor's uh, work, his messages, everything that he has is in, uh, he has already documented it in some or many form of his platform that we will be sharing with all of you in the link below. So uh, to cut things short, please uh, put in any questions that you have uh, below. We'll be taking one or two questions. Uh, Aziz Rajab over here asking, after 10 or, 10 or years of teaching or so, do you think we should already be a professional teacher if not reflect on that? Hmm. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, well, um, there's no hard and fast rule about how long it takes to really develop our ourselves to become a so-called professional. It depends on uh, a person. It should, uh, I think it will be different from person to person. Uh, if you are really into it, if you are really passionate into your, you know, your teaching, you will do a lot of things every day, you know. Every day is thinking about how you can become better and better. So within short time, I think you will you will kind of uh, achieve all those attributes that I have discussed just now, you know. Uh, it could be within one year, two years even, you know. Uh, but if you are doing it slowly at your own pace because you have other things to do, for example, lecturers at the university, they have to do research and so on, you know. Uh, maybe it take longer time. But I would say 10 years should be long enough. I would say five years should be there. You should be there uh, already, you know, should be there already. Right. Yeah. So, so also, uh, just to add on as well, um, a lot of people might not understand why a teacher or a professional educator will spend so much of time uh, tirelessly behind the scenes crafting the best material, best game, best magic moments for students out there. Uh, I'm not sure if you have seen this, but from what I observed, when the video was played of uh, Steve Spangler, right? Uh, Prof's eyes was uh, lighting up when he was watching that video. So uh, I guess it resonates really well with what, uh, what, what Prof has to deliver today, right? Uh, adding on towards that from Sharifa Aziza, uh, inspiring talk indeed. Thank you, professional academics should uphold and stick to certain principles in education. How do you ensure that you stay positive throughout when there may be others such as top management of your institution who may not be agreeable to your principles, or in that case, your practices, your games, how you engage it as a deem, uh, the way that you deem to be. How, how do you say that on Prof? I can truly, I can truly relate uh, to this one. Um, to stay positive all the time is, is really hard. Um, so that's why I think it's very important. Uh, we, cannot do it, we cannot do this alone, Jay, uh, Dr. Sharifa. Uh, we cannot do this alone. That's why we have to be in the community of practitioners. Uh, that's why I encourage all of you. So maybe this is a, ch a chance, Jay, for me to uh, plug in the, uh, here. Uh, I would like to encourage all of you to join uh, our Facebook community. That's one way, one of many ways to being in a community. So join our aspiring young academic uh, Facebook group. And the other one is the global community for edu YouTubers, edu creators, and edu streamers. So these are the two Facebook groups. Um, 
the reason being if you are in the community just like what we are now in this session now we are talking the same language we are speaking the same language the same wavelength we are sharing the same passion the same interest so we need you know just like learning learning is social by its nature so when we have we are in the circle of passionate educators we can share our concern we can share our struggles and we you know and when through that sharing even though we can do, we are doing this on facebook we get that kind of the spirit uh, and the positive energy that can really help us and bring us up when we are down you know so that's to mean uh, one of the thing that we need to do being in the community don't isolate yourself uh, because um, our journey will be very long so there are always the up and down you always want to be the up not the down so when you are on the way down get yourself in your circle in the circle get i mean the circle of positive people and they will lift us up all right so nicely put so in a way uh, what prof karim has just mentioned everything is documented on his various platforms so for those of you tuning in right now or those who are watching in later in the recorded version so here are all of uh, profs uh, uh, materials uh, on profkarim.com, right? And then here is uh, his uh, YouTube channel where he, since the starting of MCO, he has been creating a lot of materials. Materials on what? On everything that you need as a teacher to be equipped uh, to uh, for learning during MCO. From how do you set up your projectors on on how do you uh, how do you engage students in front of the the screen. Uh, is it easy to become YouTuber? His lifelong journey, the way to speak on teleprompter. So everything that you need, right? It's all in this YouTube channel. So I want all of you after this session to please go and subscribe to uh, Prof. Abdul Karim Alias's uh, uh, YouTube channel, all right? So everything is over there. So uh, we have to cut it short uh, before we, we go to Prof. Karim for his uh, final words and final uh, message for everyone. If you want Prof. Karim to appear in our upcoming Edu Chat series, right, where we will have two hours of non-stop uh, drilling on Prof, his passion, where he's coming from, please do comment below that if you want him to appear on our channel, right? I believe one hour is definitely not enough for Prof. For 25 years, to compress it in one year, I salute you for Prof for your message and everything that you have just presented over. I hope a lot more teachers are resonating with what you have just presented over here. And uh, we hope that more of you can share this video up to all of the teachers and parents out there. All right, so Prof, final message for all those who are watching and will be watching. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I think this is really a great opportunity to share uh, and uh, deliver, convey the message to me that's very, very important. Um, we have 400,000 plus teachers and we have uh, X thousand of uh, educators, uh, lecturers in the higher academic, uh, higher education uh, institution as well. So um, it's very important for us to do uh, our very best uh, because we are responsible to nurture the so-called future young talents, future young leaders that will take over uh, I mean, they will become the, the future nation builders in the future as leaders and in all different professions as well. But it all started from us as a teacher. So if they start well, we would assume that they will end, end up well as a good citizen of Malaysia, as a good citizen of, you know, as a global, good global citizen. It all started from us as an educator, as a teacher, and therefore it is the amana, and it is uh, what the uh, yeah the amana or what is called in English, uh, yeah the, the 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 thing that entrusted entrusted upon us as an educator. So continue to learn, don't stop learning, and join all this learning community because we want to lift every everyone up together. That's all, Jay, uh, from me. And of course, if there's an opportunity to have the session, uh, what we we'll call this, uh, the chat, chat series, yeah. the chat series, I would be happy if we can if we can find a good, I mean, the time to do that. I would be happy to interact with educators uh, from uh, no, around uh, in Malaysia. 
So once again, thank you for the opportunity. Once again, thank you for all the audience for spending the precious time on Saturday to listen to my rambling. <laughs> thank you. All right. So everyone, we have to uh, reluctantly uh, send off Prof Karim. So uh, for those of you who want more of uh, Prof Karim's sharing, uh, please do tune in on edu. Uh, summit.co and the, the Facebook channel and also please go to Prof's uh, YouTube channel right there are a lot of resources on his thoughts on his uh, passion and all of the message that he's delivering to teachers out there the teacher of teachers of, as what I've said for the entire edu summit no one other more perfect to uh, deliver this topic right so um, signing uh, Jay, off Prof Jay, one, one last message Jay uh yes. thank you thank you again to you uh to the organizer thank you for for the, for, for the pre free promotion of my <laughs> my web page and also for the youtube and uh, uh please uh, don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel <laughs> that's all yes, thank we'll you be sure to add that in into the comment right all right <laughs> so thank you so much prof it has yeah, been an you. honor having you on this channel and delivering this message to teachers here all right yeah, so uh finally Thank you so much, and uh, yeah. we'll see you again in the very near future. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay, so there you go, uh, Prof Karim. As I've said, the godfather of teacher, uh, the teacher of teachers, right? So uh, I hope that uh, what he has just presented over here would inspire teachers out there who are in despair, right? Who is looking for direction to find back your passion, right? To find back your direction in education and to bring education, um, not ju just to bring education, but to elevate the experience of education in our classroom for the future generations to come. All right, so uh, we have to cut short on the sharing session. So uh, joining us for the next session will be Dr. Avzlan, all right? So uh, everyone, let's skip on to the next classroom. So I'll see you in a while. All right, and by the way, uh, please do remember any uh, comments or any feedbacks to Prof Karim, please uh, key it in in the uh, feedback forms, okay? Any comments, wishes, compliments, please all put it there in the comments and also on the feedback form, all right? Thank you. Signing off to the next classroom. Bye-bye.